Our scripture lesson for this first Sunday in July, 2020, will be taken from Luke chapter 11, verses 29 through 32, the New King James Version. And while the crowds were thickly gathered together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented of the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now, my sisters and brothers in Christ, please stand to your feet to receive to the Holy Desk to deliver our morning message entitled, Signs of the Times. Our pastor, teacher, and presiding prelate, Bishop, Dr. George B. Jackson. States. 
is the most blessed and bountiful land on earth. Amen. The Lord is sending his deaf angel through to teach a lesson to those who will listen. All that said, all that done, glad to have you back. Amen. Thank God for you. We're going to try to have uh, as fluid a worship service as possible and to move quickly to our school of discipleship. Now my friends, our text today is from the Gospel of Luke back into the 11th chapter. I'm uh, very happy that you are here so I can move around when we were on camera I had to stay in one place. I can move around like I want to today. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 11. I've been in Luke for a few weeks now and uh, I want to continue in this thing by going to chapter 11 verse 29 through 32 and I am going to share with you today from the New King James Version. Uh, I do want to say to you, uh, my friends, uh, please don't let your mask keep you from your praise. Amen. Don't let your mask keep you from saying hallelujah. Amen. Don't let your mask keep you from worshiping the Lord. Amen. You say everything else through your mask. Say hallelujah through your mask. Now we look at this text today and I just want to open it up and I want to extract, extrapolate some uh, truths here that will give us an understanding of our title today. The sermon today is, is simply uh, entitled something that will catch uh, your attention, something that will take you behind the scenes and look closely at the signs of the time. We're going to look at the signs of the time. And Jesus is a little irate because the religious leaders, the uh, so-called rulers, they are constantly testing him. They're constantly trying him. And in this particular instance, they come to him and they say, show us a sign. Let us see a sign that you are the Messiah. We want to see a sign that you are who they say you are. As if he had to constantly prove himself. He had to constantly make uh, them believe who he really is. And my friends, don't you get tired of having to prove yourself to folks, having to prove to folks that you are intelligent, prove to folks that you are uh, upright, prove to folks that you're honest, prove to folks that you got a good sense, prove to folks that you know what you're doing. You get tired of proving yourself to folks over and over again, particularly to people who don't mean that much anyway. <laughs> It always gets uh, underneath my skin that folks who don't care about something want me to show them that I care. Yeah. Well, if you don't care, why well, gotta show you why I care? Yeah. You know, prove yourself. Show us a sign, Jesus. If you who you say you are, show us a sign because we lack the faith to believe that you are who you are. And I know Jesus is weary of it because he has said to them, even if one come back from the dead and say that you should repent, you won't believe. Let alone someone alive. Now show us a sign. You know, validate who you are. And then we go into our text. And as the text opens up, Jesus is surrounded by masses of people. They want to be close to him. They want to be near him. They want to hear him. 
They want to embrace him. They want to be impacted by him. They're all around him. And he says, you know, it's an evil generation that seeks a sign. It's a perverted generation that has to have physical evidence. Now, my friends, what he's saying to us is that faith is greater than what you can see. If you can see that faith, then you don't have to have faith. If you can put your eyes, even your lying eyes, on a person, place, or thing, you don't have to have faith. Because it's visible, it's there, it's tangible. But faith, my friends, is something that's mysterious almost. It's the substance of things that you hope for. It's the evidence of things you can't see with your natural eye. For those of us who have Holy Ghost discernment, those of us who can see behind the scenes, those of us who can see deeper in, don't have to see it in the physical because we can see it in the spiritual. Amen. Amen. Some of us get so caught up on natural stuff that we forget that this is just one realm of life. This is just one sphere of life. There's a supernatural sphere. There's a holy divinity sphere. There's a sphere beyond your comprehension that folks can't understand when you get a move, when you get a hug, when you get a pull that makes you change your direction because you don't always live in the physical. You have that in more. You know, uh, folks may think you're crazy, but you can still your mama talk. Let me go get to talk to the light. See, see. Sometimes it's the light. My daddy talks to me in the spiritual realm and pulls me in directions that the devil is trying to make me avoid. The devil doesn't want me to go in this direction. So he gives me physical things that makes me want to turn and go in another direction, but when the Spirit of the Lord falls fresh on me, it turns me in the right direction. He says it's an evil generation. It's got to have something physical. Seek it aside. But I submit to you today that I'm only going to give them a sign that they don't think is a sign. A sign that they can't acknowledge as a sign. What are you talking about? I'm going to give them the sign of Jonah. That prophet who went to Nineveh. I'm going to give them the Jonah sign. And that'll be the only sign they get. And they got it all twisted. What do you mean the Jonah sign? Now I need to take you behind the scenes and go exegetically into the book of Jonah. And Jonah was a prophet on the run, on the land. And Jonah didn't want to go and preach to the Ninevites because they were the enemies. They were part of the Assyrian Empire and they were the enemies of the children of Israel. But God sent the prophet into in the territory. And you have to keep in mind that even the folks you don't like, God likes them. Even the folks that you don't associate, God associates with them. People that you have decided that you're going to write them off erase them, God deals with them. And he sent Jonah into the land of the Ninevites. But before Jonah got to the Ninevites, Jonah ran. And he ran and caught a ship. And on that ship that was headed to Tarsus, God sent trouble on the waters. And you know my friends, sometimes when you are trying to avoid what God wants you to do in your life, He'll send some trouble in your life. He'll send some storms in your life. Storms are always bad because sometimes a storm is used 
to correct the situation. Sometimes the storm is used to tear down some stuff that's in your way. You know, there's some limbs, some dead limbs on some trees that the storm will drop to the ground so the tree can live. How many of you have been walking around with dead limbs on your tree? Holy Ghost. The storm of the light break those limbs. And the tree begins to go further and further. Because there's some stuff that's 
the signs of the time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Compromise. 